So a pump is a system to deliver insulin, both at a constant rate and as boluses when you need it. It also records a lot of information, which we can then download to the computers and the families and the physicians can look at that to see how the child or adolescent is doing over time, which is very beneficial. The pump, however, is a machine that needs lots of human input, needs, needs lots of TLC, and it, 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 it needs guidance and direction. It will do all the little picky points for you, but you still have to check your sugar several times a day. You still have to think about how many carbs you're having to input it. You have to push the button on the pump even when the alarm goes off. Not some of the kids forget to do that to give themselves boluses. So it still puts a lot of onus on the human beings to manage their diabetes. It helps manage their diabetes, but and it does a lot of the detailed work, but the kids, the adolescents with the per parents and families help, they still have to stay on top of things. It's not an excuse to say the pump will take care of it. The child, adolescent, families still have to take care and manage business. The pump is just one way, a tool to make it a bit easier for some families. I think it's not a something that we want people to be alarmed about, but just be prepared for and to, to know what the pump can and can't do, what it is and what it isn't. I think that a lot of, sometimes it's families with diabetes, but it's sometimes it's a healthcare professional from another field who says, oh, you should have a pump, that's the best way to manage diabetes, or a, a family member that says, oh, your child needs a pump. And um, really that's, that's because there's often a misconception about out there that if you have a pump, then, you know, the pump's going to do the work for you and take care of your diabetes, and in fact, that's not true. The, it's still the parents and the child together with their diabetes team's advice who manage the diabetes and still have to do uh, a lot of decision making and a lot of work. Um, the pump is just a vehicle for insulin delivery. It does have some advantages in terms of convenience of being able to give insulin more frequently without a needle and to change the, the basal rate or the baseline amount of insulin going in at different times of the day so that there's the potential for more fine-tuning. Um, but in practice, we, we, don't, we find that some children with diabetes and teenagers have better control on the pump and some have worse control on the pump. And uh, so there's, it's not a guarantee that your control is going to be better. There are people who have good control on the pump and also very good control on injections and others who will have poor control on the pump or poor control on injections, again, they're tools. That's complicated, isn't it? I mean, you have to be really smart to do that. I think. <laughs> I think. I mean, if you look at a, a meal, Dakota, you have to know what's in that meal? Yeah. Like, if I don't punch in, in the right cars, my sugar might go high. When you are on an insulin pump, you do have to, to test before each meal, definitely, and often a correction bolus is required, so you're testing after the meal as well. Sometimes through the night it is necessary to do that, and it requires a bit more dedication and commitment. And it is a wonderful tool if the dedication and commitment is there. However, the perception to some people is that it is uh, uh, just a pancreas, that if you put it on, it works by itself, but that's not the case. No, it's not the solution. It's not an artificial pancreas. The pancreas uh, makes constant readjustments according to your blood sugar. So the idea of the pump is to measure your sugar often and then making the corrections. So, so it, again, it involves also sometimes predicting what your sugar is likely to do in an hour or two. So it involves a lot of thinking and a lot of calculating. Um, so no, it's not a, it's not easy. It's it's a lot of work, but it when it works well, it works well. I had to do math to figure out what to do on my pump. And then after a while, we got the wizard for then I put in my sugars and then put in the carb amount and it would tell me how much insulin that it was going to give me. So is it hard? It's not that hard. 
but when you first start learning how to use a pump, it kind of is. We carb count. So when she checks her sugars, she inputs in what her glucose sugar is, and then we put in the carbs, and the pump actually calculates the correction of the sugars and gives her the amount of insulin for that, as well as the amount of insulin for the carbohydrates that she's intaking. And it gives it to her over a certain period of time, and then every hour she gets so much insulin per hour going into her system. So she always has insulin going into her. It is definitely not a pancreas, so it's more of a one-way loop right now. Uh, it will deliver the insulin. There are new uh, technologies that you can get with some of the pumps that will measure sugars uh, for up to uh, six days at a time. And again, it's like wearing a second little pump, if you like. Uh, but they're not connected yet, so we don't have what we call a closed loop like your pancreas where it determines how much sugar is in your blood and then gives the right amount of insulin where that may come someday, but there are technical difficulties with that right now, and uh, we'll see what happens. So for now, it's a one-way street, and you still have to input it, and you still have to make some decisions, and you still have to manage it. Mm -hmm.